Bad smell. He put a piece of mint in his mouth before drinking to neutralize some of the smell of urine. There was nothing he could do. David wanted to live. He had to do this because he had been trapped in the car for more than 12 hours and the oxygen was dwindling. A day ago, David was coming home from work as usual. He was passing by a hill when a landslide suddenly occurred. David's eyes went black when he came to his senses. He found the glass. The roof of the car was covered with mud. David rushed to unbuckle the seat belt. He tried to get out of the car to see what was going on outside, but the door was firmly sealed by the mud. After a moment to calm down, he immediately took out his cell phone and called for emergency help, but his cell phone had no signal. David became agitated. He tried to call for help through the radio. He couldn't get any frequency here either. The car broke down and wouldn't start. David completely lost his mind. Angry, he punched and kicked inside the car. He punched and kicked the car with such force that the mud outside the car kept falling. David was too scared to move. After three minutes, outside the car gradually calmed. At this point, David finally realized that he had been caught in a mudslide. He was buried under a mound of earth. He took a pen and paper from his bag and drew a map of the journey from his mind's eye. He figured out where he was buried. After all, a disaster of this magnitude was bound to be discovered. Now he just had to wait quietly for help. David was not the least bit afraid. He fell asleep watching a video of him and his wife. Suddenly David was awakened by a cramp in his foot. He looked at the time. It's now been five hours, but there was no sound of help from outside the mound. This time David completely panicked. He could clearly perceive that the oxygen inside the car was decreasing. So he didn't sit around and wait to die. He decided to save himself. He knocked on the window. He sensed a gap in the window. So he slowly rolls down the window. He tried to reach out and see if the ground was behind the mud. Suddenly fine mud poured into the glass. He quickly rolled out the window. He was driving when he was caught in a mudslide. He was buried alive under the mud with his heart. It's now been six hours. Suddenly the glass in the sunroof starts to blow. David hastily ripped the tape off. He tried to stop the glass from breaking, but the tape had limited resistance. In a panic, he grabbed a pry bar and put it under the glass. He temporarily stopped the glass from shattering. David could breathe a sigh of relief. He grabbed the mineral water beside him and took a big sip. He stopped at the last sip of water left. That's when he realized this was the only bottle of water left in the car. He didn't know when he would be rescued, but David thought for a long time. He finally decided that the most important thing was to solve his thirst problem. One sip of water wouldn't save his life anyway. He drank all the water. After that, he used a marker to draw a cross on the car. He turned his hope to the gods again. After praying, he checked the available supplies in the car one by one. When he turned around, a ticking sound came from the roof of the car. David took a closer look. Water was seeping through the cracked glass in the sunroof. David was so excited, he didn't care if the water was clean or not. He pressed himself against the glass and sucked greedily on the yellow liquid. He didn't think the crack was big enough. He enlarged the hole with a nail clipper. Then he folded his bank card to create a simple funnel to collect the water. Half an hour later, a bottle of water was filled. At this point David had a bold idea in his head. Since there is a water source in the mud, maybe the ground is not far away. He found an iron pipe in the car. The iron pipe was inserted along the gap. Inside the tube leaked a pile of sludge. David hurriedly withdrew the pipe. He plugged the hole with newspaper. He made a hole in the bottle cap. Then he tied a string and put it through the iron pipe. He wanted to use the cap to stop the sewage from flowing down. Sure enough, with the cap to stop the flow of water did not drop, but the resistance also increased a lot. An iron pipe to the root steel did not see a ray of light. David attached a second tube. As the tube goes deeper, each hinge of advance will become a great deal of effort. David took out a jack. With the help of a jack, he saves a lot of effort. The height of the jack reached its limit. No choice. David draped a thick bath towel over his shoulders. He used his back to push the pipe up to the top. Suddenly, he felt the resistance disappear. He hurriedly took out a copper wire along the inner wall the tube and poked open the top of the bottle cap. A miracle happened. The end of the tube revealed a glimmer of light. David's hands were dancing with excitement. He took a big breath of fresh air to get more oxygen. David tried to light the rope inside the tube. He didn't know that the narrow opening of the tube would not burn. He also nearly ignited the car cushion. In a panic, David hit his head on the iron pipe. The lack of oxygen and the pain put him into a coma. When David woke up again, his head was covered in blood. The pipe had also been sealed by the dirt and fallen. He hurriedly embuckled his belt and tied it around his head to stop the bleeding. David scooped up his own urine. He dumped it down to relieve the smell of urine. He ate a bag of mints. David had been buried under the earth for more than 12 hours. He was able to survive thanks to the cover of the car. Suddenly the windshield was completely shattered by the earth. David found tools to support the roof of the car. 
He didn't want to wait passively any longer. He was ready to give it another try. He's going to climb out of the mound of dirt where he's being held. Before escaping, he first had to solve the problem of lack of oxygen. During the climb, he took out the spare tire and attached a tube to use the tire as an oxygen tank. He also applied oil to his body to lubricate and reduce the effect of resistance. After everything is ready, he carefully took off the towel of the skylight. He followed the direction of the dirt left behind and began to climb upwards. He did not know how long he had been plowing the dirt. The falling mud had buried the car. When he had trouble breathing, he sucked in a mouthful of air from the tires. But fate seemed to be playing tricks on him. David's foot slipped. The mountain collapsed twice. David cried out desperately for help. He was still buried under the yellow earth. After 10 minutes, the surrounding area was quiet again and something seemed to be wriggling in the earth. Yes, it was. David wasn't dead. He crawled out of the earth. He wiped the dirt off his face. He shows his head. He breathes heavily. There was only a trace of oxygen left in the small space. David saw a small hole in the top of his head. He reached out helplessly to pick it. Suddenly, the small hole let in a glimmer of light. David was so excited, he crawled upwards as hard as he could. He finally climbed out of the mound of dirt where he had been held captive for 20 hours. He saw the blue sky. David succeeded in rescuing himself with his perseverance. Then the question arises. If you were trapped under the mound, would you choose to drink here and to save yourself? End of story. Follow me. The next story is more exciting.